all right everybody today's the day we're going to be putting this in the ground as you can see it's all triple coated paint uh the hatch is in the air pipes everything's sealed up hatch area uh kind of disappointed because this is the machine i ended up renting because they didn't have a bigger one available but i rented it for eight hours i should be able to get the job done it's just going to take a lot longer uh but here I rented this for 300. Uh, that's a pretty good deal, I think, considering other places wanted uh, wanted about twice as much. But uh, I could not get a bigger excavator, so I'm gonna have to, you know, do what I can with this one, and hopefully I'll get the whole dug in eight hours worth of time. But uh, the crane, uh, I wanted to put it in the ground tomorrow, but uh, we're gonna have to see about the crane where I'm still waiting on a phone call. If not, uh, I'll think of something else on how to get it down in the ground, and you're going to see it here, so stay tuned. Okay, I wanted to give you an update here of our hole digging. This is that little excavator that we rented. Uh, you have to kind of build a shelf for it to reach down and dig down a little deeper. Uh, I don't know if you can see down there or not, but right there is the water table. So I'm eight and a half foot deep. That's exactly how high those containers are. And it's a low lying area where I'm putting this in. So I elected to not go any deeper into the water table. And I'm gonna level it off because this is a low spot anyway. So it's gonna still gonna have two foot of dirt over it. It's just gonna be built up because that big amount of dirt is going to get bigger, believe it or not, because I'm only halfway through this hole. So, just an update on how the hole digging is coming. Okay, everybody, uh, most of you already know the ones that have been emailing me and everything and asked me where part three is. Uh, this collar has a lot to do with it, but I just had cervical surgery, so I'm kind of behind on this, uh, getting this in the ground. I wanted to give you an update today. It's been a couple weeks since I had the surgery. It might be a couple more weeks before I'm able to finish this up. But uh, one of the problems I wanted to tell you is that we got it in the hole. Uh, we got the uh, all set down on the pylons and everything. And like I said, it's been a couple weeks and we did have a lot of rain. And uh, I know this thing is watertight because it actually floated. Okay, it filled up with water and it floated off the blocks, off the concrete pads, and I'm going to have to drain the water out and uh, get it set back up on the pads there. And I'm going to keep a sump pump running just to keep it out until I'm actually ready to coat this with tar and put plastic around it and uh, start putting the dirt in it. But uh, let me show you down in this hole. You can see that it's kind of sitting a little low on that end right there. We had this all leveled out and uh it is full of water i mean the water went down quite a bit since uh since a few days ago but uh it did actually float it is dry inside so you know it's watertight and uh we're gonna put a sump pump down on this end and uh get that all pumped out and try and get back up on its blocks where it's supposed to be and keep a sump pump in there in case we get more rain so we don't uh, have it floating away uh, anymore. But if you notice, it's uh, kind of level with the ground here. And with that small excavator I had, if you look up there at that building, it's about three and a half foot up from where this is. So all that dirt, I elected to bring it down because we were at the water table when we were digging. And I'm going to put two foot of dirt on. It's going to be a gradual slope from that garage on down over top of this container and then taper off into the into the ground over here so it, it'll look natural uh, it, it's a low-lying area here and it did fill up with water quite quite quickly so we'll get that taken care of and I'm gonna get this water taken out and hopefully I'll get some help out here so I can uh, get this all wrapped up and uh, get the dirt over it and uh, show you the inside but the inside's dry so I know uh, it's just like I said, a submarine. Uh, you know, just put it in water and actually it floats. <laughs> so, uh, all right, we'll get this all taken care of and uh, you'll see it coming up real short. 
All right, we have a small sump pump in there. It's going to take a while because that's a lot of water, but eventually it'll come out. I jumped on the top of this, and it's like uh, jumping onto a boat because it is floating. So it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting how this <laughs> is just floating on this one end. That end's a little bit heavier because we have the wall, the first wall, way down there, and it's uh, it's pretty heavy on that side. So that's probably why that side's on the ground. But this side is definitely up in the air, but uh, just like uh, floating there. But we'll get the water out of it and uh, get it back up on its pads and see if we can't get this thing uh, all covered up so it doesn't float away. Okay, everybody, this is the day that I'm going to try and cover this up. Uh, as you know, most of you that were sending me emails, I told you what the delay was. Uh, I did have surgery about three and a half weeks ago, so I got this big old brace I'm going to be wearing today because uh, we have a lot of rain coming in. Everything's really wet. It's it's a pain in the butt to keep this hole drained with the the sump pump running and everything to keep the water out. But uh, today I'm going to put the brace on. I'm going to try and uh, get this top roof coated. Uh, with some tar and then I'm putting the plastic over it three coats of plastic in three different sections which I'll show you when I get to that area but uh, it's all ready to go uh, everything's sealed uh, the escape patch just make sure you put some rubberized uh, silicone on the thread so you know uh, 10 20 years from now if you need to take them bolts out they're gonna be okay the threads aren't gonna be messed up the nuts are welded on the outside, so you just take the bolts out and pull uh, the escape hatch, and uh, everything's sealed up with that. I am running a 110 electric line over to that garage, uh, so and it's going to be backed up solar power. So I do have some extra wires that are going to go in there, but I did seal the opening, which I could still open it back up to put more wires through, which I will be doing. But before the big rain comes, I want to try and get this thing covered up. And if you notice, it is not as deep as I wanted it to be. Uh, because uh, this garage up here sits a lot higher, and this was actually a low spot. So I determined the excavator I had was kind of small. It uh, really wasn't what I wanted, but they didn't have another one available. So I went with this, and you can see I built a shelf to get down to dig a little deeper. Uh, I could have went deeper, but it was going to take a lot more time to build another shelf. But I decided that I will still have two foot of dirt over it. I'm just going to level out this hill all the way down, and it'll be covered two foot deep and taper it off. So I will not have enough dirt to do that today, but... 75 foot away I'm building a pond over there so I'm going to have a lot more dirt to level this area off but I am going to try and hump it up on here to show you that it'll take the weight two foot of dirt nothing's going to happen to it and then I'll fill in this area over here with the dirt from the pond so uh, I'm a little pressed for time so I'm going to get busy on putting some tar on this roof and get the plastic on. It's a little windy. It should be a challenge, but I should be able to do it. After that, this old time front loader is going to be the one pushing the dirt. It does a pretty good job. It's kind of wet, but I might have to take my time with it. But I got somebody coming over later on to uh, run it for me. And uh, so I'll give you an update when I get the roof coated and the plastic on. Okay, I just got done putting the tar on the roof. Uh, just spread it around. doesn't matter how thick or how it looks. Uh, keep in mind, the shoes you are wearing now are probably going to get tar on them because we're going to put the plastic over and it's definitely going to get all over your shoes. So make sure you wear a pair of throwaway shoes or boots or whatever. Uh, the plastic is 20 foot wide by 100 foot. So I'm going to divide that by three. We're going to be putting... Uh, one over this way, overlap it, another one this way, and then one lengthwise. So it'll be covered on top three times, and the sides should be covered all the way down to the ground. Then <clears throat> we'll be ready to start pushing dirt on it. So stay tuned. I'll give you a picture when we get the plastic on. 
Okay, we got three coats of plastic on it, two one way and one down the other way. Uh, it's all sealed up with the plastic. There's plenty hanging down below inside the hole. Uh, we're going to start putting the dirt in it to keep it in there. Uh, we'll see how far I get today. Uh, just remember when you take a bucket, put one in on one side and take care and make sure you get the plastic in there, right? So it doesn't tear it off. But uh, don't offside it and push it off the concrete pillars that we have it sitting on. Just uh, put a few buckets on one side, go to the other side, put a couple buckets in it, and that way you keep even pressure on both sides as you're as you're filling in the hole. Otherwise, it could push it off those uh, concrete pillars you have it sitting on. So, okay, we'll give you an update when I get some of this dirt pushed in. Okay, this is a lot of work with that little uh, front loader there, but just got to keep working at it and get it done. Save me from renting a big piece of machinery to do it in an hour or so. But uh, I kind of broke the front loader, so I got to make repairs, and I'm really hoping that the rain will hold off till I can get this thing completely buried. As you can see, I'm almost to the top on this side. I'm about five foot shy on the other side, so... Uh, we got everything in there to where it'll hold the plastic down, so I'm just hoping we don't get too much rain to make it a mud bath. But that's your update. Okay, here's day two of the burial. I just wanted to give you an update. Last night I had to quit. Uh, I'm running out of dirt. So I got it about up to the roof there, but uh, we had a little bit of rain last night. Like I said, to get more dirt, we're going to be putting in a pond, but we're not going to do that for another three, four weeks. We have to have a dry, dry spell, but uh, <clears throat> we're going to do what we can to get most of that dirt up here to get at least a foot on top of this uh, container here. And then uh, after we build the pond, we'll bring more dirt up here and get the terrain the way I want it, how it slopes down with... Uh, two foot on top of this container and gradually taper off and uh, so we're going to work at it today it's a little slippery we got a little rain last night so it might slow me down a little bit but uh, hopefully today I'll be done with it because we got cold rainy weather coming on the way I have to get this done today so I'll give you an update uh, later on today okay here we are we got enough dirt on top for me to be happy about it uh, for now I ran out of easy dirt to get to with that loader it's kind of an antique but uh, I parked it on top just to show you the strength uh, I'm gonna be putting another foot and a half of dirt on top of this uh, once I get my pond built so I can have some dirt to level it off you can see that garage how high it is and it's gonna the ground's gonna slope this way and uh, be a nice tapered and then springtime plant some grass it should be should be really nice back here but uh, that's it I'm uh, you know just out of surgery I'm pretty sore from doing this but I'm glad I got it covered up because we got some bad weather coming and I'm gonna wait out the weather before I get some equipment out here to build that pond and bring some dirt up I gotta have a little bit of dry weather so we'll see how that goes but uh, just take your time. One thing on this I, I, I want to stress is uh, don't spin your tires. <laughs> you know, when you drop the wood on there or drop the, the dirt on top of it, you have that plastic in that tar. Uh, don't slide it around or don't try and back drag it. Just drop it and let it go. Don't spin your tires on it because uh, you want that ground to set up before uh, before you start actually driving on it. I was pretty careful getting up on there and everything worked out all right. I just wanted to show you the strength of it. Uh, let's go down inside. I'm going to run an extension cord out because I don't have my electric lines hooked up yet. But I'll run an extension cord out and we'll go down inside and look around and see what it looks like. Okay, I just dropped an electric cord down in there. We're going to plug it in when we get down in there, but I wanted to show you. That looks like a long way down there, but uh, anyway, I got these little things where you step on to get down in it. I made the hatch area tight for a reason. Uh, let me try and get down in here. And uh, we'll get some lights on them. in hmm. okay. then we go 
got some lights. All right, now here's uh, what I told you the living area. Looks pretty nice. Uh, I got a futon in here. Um, yeah, well, Julie. okay, Julie was hollering at me, but uh, yeah, I put a futon in here. Uh, make sure you anything big that you want in here, make sure you do it before you weld them doors shut. Anyway, uh, I've been tracking a lot of mud in here, but uh, I got uh, 110 electric plus is going to be 12 volt. So, you know, I got all my 12 volt lines right here. This is a 110. Uh, I don't have it. This is going to be for a, a 12 volt here. I'm going to have two separate systems here because uh, I'm going with uh, solar panels instead of a generator. So, uh, the batteries are going to go over here where I was going to put the generator. But, uh, I still have a lot to do. I'm going to work in this and on my leisure. I'm going to put the, the locks in, uh, repaint it, clean up some of this mud I've been tracking in. And uh, this is the storage area. I haven't painted over. I just sealed all the welds, put a good coat of sealant on it, and paint it up. Build your shelving in here, and uh, you're good to go. But, uh, boy, that's solid now. Yeah. But uh, as you can see, it's not even uh, up against that yet. So we got a lot of pressure on there. I drove the tractor over the mud on the sides just to pack it down real good. But uh, boy, that's that's tight. I like that. So anyway, you got your exhaust. Uh, this is going to be the 110. And that'll be the exhaust, and that end will be the intake. I do have another one for that side. It's going to be 12 volt on that side, so you run one or the other, so it'll be exit and in. So, uh, be your ventilation. I'm going to, on this wall here, I'm going to have a bunch of shelving puts, a DVD player, and all that stuff. And uh, it's going to be, be the area over here where you just hang out. But uh, that uh, up there is the floor. Uh, if you remember, we inverted it. Uh, these walls are load-bearing walls. Uh, I got a bunch of dirt up there, and I have the tractor sitting on top. And uh, this thing is not going to go anywhere. I'm going to seal that up with some uh, good sealing paint. And uh, this will be, uh, I'm going to work on it through the winter. It's nice and cool down here, too. Uh, in the wintertime, it'll be warm. Of course, it'll be pretty much 50 degrees the whole time. So, uh uh thanks for all your emails uh sorry for not getting back as soon as some of you wanted me to but uh, i answer them as the order i receive them and uh i hope your build goes just as good as this one did because everything went pretty good uh, all right everybody that concludes this series of the putting the shipping container in the ground uh everything went well uh a uh, few pointers i want to recap on is uh, build your cage on the inside, the rib cage of it on the inside. That's is so much stronger than putting it on the outside. And it only makes sense that your rib cage is on the inside on your body. Pulls everything out. That whole area is going to be pushing out on that wall. You weld it on the outside, just them welds are going to be holding that whole wall up instead of that whole structure. So anyway, turn it over. Uh, all that strength, if you leave it down below, you're wasting all that strength in the container. Put it above your head. Let you know two foot of ground drive a Mack truck across it. It's not going to go anywhere. Use that weight, and you have to seal it. So if the people that are building them and are not inverting it and you're not doing anything with the wooden floor, you're going to have water percolating up through the floors, and by the time you need to get in there to use it, you're going to be walking in water. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to run a sump pump all the time. If you build it the way I build it, it's a tank. It's a liquid tanker. It will not leak. It, it's totally sealed airtight. Uh, that's the way to do it. And I hope, I hope I gave you a lot of pointers on how to do this. Uh, with my experience, 35 years experience in the steel structural, uh, I know what I'm talking about. And, and if you want to build it your own way, you're more than happy to. Uh, but 
I hope I gave you some pointers. Your emails, uh, they're awesome. Uh, I'm glad I could help a lot of you out. Uh, I do not build these commercially, but uh, I got too much going on right now. If I do, I will put it out on this channel. Uh, but as of right now, I don't. And whatever you're going to use this for, whether you're watching this video, if you uh, just want a safe place to go for a tornado, thunderstorm, uh, if you think the world's going to end tomorrow, uh, that's a good safe place to go. Uh, if you, uh, I know when I worked midnights, I'd have died for something like that. It's uh, <laughs> that would be a nice, quiet, dark place to go to sleep, nice and cool, 50 degrees underground. Uh, trying to sleep during the day was a big problem for me, but uh, one of those that would have worked out pretty good. So, but whatever your use is for it, uh, once you get it in, you'll be at ease. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty neat to go down underground like there and sit on the futon and and just know that uh, you know there's only one way in here and you're safe. So, uh, take care, everybody, and thanks for watching.